Hello, this is Bridge Raw with Divine Essentials. Okay, guys, we are moving on to part two of level four. And I've had some technical difficulties today with my phone, just not wanting to work at all. And I'm like, you gotta work, please, because I need it. I don't know what to do without it. So if I get through this, great. If not, I guess I'm just talking to myself. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit more about removing implants and entities. Um, and we're going to talk about clearing demonic attachments. And then soul fragment retrieval and working with everyone's level of consciousness which you know connects with basically beliefs and thoughts and how beliefs and thoughts create things and intention dictates what those thoughts and things you know do and how they are and then trauma hinders our beliefs our energy and our intentions so we're going to talk about this now i feel like i don't really need to go crazy with it because I already had that video, like the little one in between when I did, I was like, oh, we're doing an activation and I haven't talked about it yet. Let me do this real quick. So I made like a, um, a video that's not really part of like the numbers of the series. I'm sure if you've been going through the playlist in order, you've probably seen it, um, where I went over, you know, like why things may have happened or, you know, where they kind of come from or the differences. So if you have not seen that, you can go back and watch that one again. Um, and I think it's good to get repetition anyways with some stuff because not everybody pays attention to everything I say and not everybody's going to remember everything I say, especially with all of the information that I'm giving. Especially if you guys are like, you know, binging it on a certain day where you're like, I'm going to watch six videos today. You're not going to absorb all of that. But a good way to help you would to take notes. Like when I, you know, say something that sticks out and you're like, I didn't want to remember that, you know, take notes. That's always been able to help me when I want to learn something. I'll like watch a video and write down the things that I, I feel are important from the video or I'll like read an article and like write down what I feel, you know, I need to know like or remember or want to remember basically. Um, also, I'm somebody that has to do something to like be able to do it. Like if you show me, you doing something and then are like, hey, go do that thing I showed you how to do. I'm going to be like, I don't know how to do it. But if I physically do it, I'd probably be able to do it again. <laughs> like I have to, everybody's got their way of learning. So however it works for you is great for you. Um, now, with removing implants and entities, basically, I feel like there's, there's different things here. There's like, there's entities and then there's implants and then there's attachments, and then there's like this all-encompassing thing where it's like basically all of it just gets like mumble jumbled together, and it's like whatever, whatever you want to call it, it's just not a good thing. Okay, it's like it's something that's there that's negative. Now, with the entities, I feel for a majority of people, it's self-made. It's like it's something that happened to them that they were traumatized or they were abused or something just nasty went down and in that moment when that happened like a part of you like when you go through trauma there's like a part of you that like gets fragmented and it's like you change in that moment your belief system changes your frequency changes your energy changes everything about you changes and until you like heal and process that and retrieve that part of your soul back things can happen or like you can start creating not so great circumstances or situations based off of your belief system that you've now had and the experiences that you have been through if you have like you know like just feel like post-traumatic stress or um, you never process the emotions, you never express the emotions, or if you go to like, you know, addiction, or if you start like trying to escapism, it's like there's, there's all different types of things that can like bring this on even worse. Um, but it's basically for me, like when I've worked with people who I've, you know, seen have something on them that was like, Ooh, um, they, they are the ones that created it or it, and it's not their fault. It's not like that. I'm like, they did it. And it's all their fault but it's like it's from their consciousness they are the creator of their reality and they took what they went through and began to make it bigger and bigger and bigger by never confronting it or like taking it on head first you know and then allowing guilt and like 
um, fear and anger and resentment and just like all of the nasty lower vibrational emotions that go along with being abused or traumatized or hurt in any way, depending on what you've been like sexually abused people I find have come to me and had like a demon attachment and it was definitely like them who made it you know because it it grew over time it like followed them places it's like it's just I just know I just know that they made it and then we have the like circumstances where maybe there is um like something from another dimension or another level of energy frequency consciousness because everything in the universe is energy everything is consciousness everything is frequency like it's just all like and it's all on different vibrations so there can be consciousness or a being type of thing that comes from somewhere else that maybe doesn't have the best ideas or, or is it is just looking for a host basically and I find that those are the ones that most people like talk about nobody's ever talking about like oh they gave me a nice little implant to help me like do whatever because I do believe just it's duality um, that there are positive and negative things that are out there that can be like you know put into you at different points and even even in saying that it's like sometimes it could have even just been the intention behind it because everything is influenced by our intention so if somebody you know has the intention to assist you and they do something even if they're doing something and it's like not the best thing to be doing but their intention was good it's usually not going to end up being that bad um, like like something kind of like will make it be okay because the intention behind what we do and what we create is very important if you just you know be very aware of your your intentions and be very aware of your beliefs you can create an amazing life you can do whatever you want but if you are fearful and you're not you know careful with your intention if you're all willy-nilly and like you don't really give a shit you don't think too much about other people don't think too much about yourself um, you may do some stuff that ends up leading you to be susceptible to you know having like an implant now everybody's got their thing with this basically like if you want to like subscribe to the whole thing where like an outside thing comes and I feel like because we, we can't see everything that's around us we can see like 5% of the visible you know thing that's happening out there we all know that there's stuff out there we've all like experienced we, we all see it we all feel it we all are like ooh, there's definitely some stuff but we're always like ooh, it's the angels ooh, it's this there's definitely some other stuff out there too it's like it's probably like right here like everywhere and I don't say that to freak people out but it's like it's there it's out there it's it's like you cannot see it but if you do things that are kind of like not good for you, if you go to a negative place, if you were abused and it makes you sad and depressed, if you, you know, drink a lot of alcohol, like think about alcohol, just the name, they call it spirits. It brings in spirits, like it, it opens you up to be susceptible for lower things and it lowers your vibration. It's a suppressant. So when you drink alcohol, you become, you know, susceptible to those types of things. You know experiences coming about where you might get an um, implant you know put into you which is basically an entity of a different life form or consciousness and they have different ones like there's some that are like tentacle like and then there's some that are like like computer like and then there's some that is just like air it's like it's it's just like I don't even know what to say it's just gas um, but it doesn't matter what it is because all of them can be removed and all of them can be cleared away and a lot of times people don't even know that they have it there will be symptoms but they're like they're oblivious because most people it like most of the time if you get one like you've probably had it for a while and it's like not something to be afraid afraid of because that's like what most of these things feed on like anything that's going to attach to you and be like Ooh, this is my host is something that probably isn't of the highest high and of the light but there's also um, you know good beings out there who may give you an implant for something good you know like help you with your whatever you got going on like especially like star seeds a lot of star seeds you may not be like used to being here you may have implants inside of you that are specific for something to help you to like regulate with being here or to like cope with being here without wanting to like kill yourself you know um, so everybody just know that like there's good and bad and 
the worst thing you could do is be afraid of it. And then to get rid of it is again, the most important piece of all work that I say in the Mune key, that I say here, that I say everywhere, is your intention. Your intention and your belief are the biggest two things. If you can believe in yourself to be able to get rid of whatever it is, then you will. And if you set the intention to do it and go through like a visualization of it, then you're going to get rid of it. So that's the basic easy way. Some people end up needing outside help because they don't believe in themselves or they don't believe that they possibly could be strong enough to get rid of it or that they have to go through some freaking crazy thing to extract it. Like they make it a big deal out of nothing. They, they turn shit into worse shit because that's just the human condition. And it's those things that are sucking on you and making you all weird anyway to begin with that make you think that shit to begin with. So it's like it's doing its job. If you are in fear and you are, I'm scared and you go and you're like, I don't think I can do it myself. Or if you try it yourself and you release yourself from it, but then a week later you're like, it's back. That's an indicator that you need to step into your power and recognize that you are the creator of your reality and you are, you have free will. Like you have, you probably at some point even were tricked or manipulated to giving permission for some of the things that people get with the like implants because other beings are not supposed to just come do stuff to you, but they could have manipulated or tricked you into being like, okay, um, or you could have thought you were talking to somebody else. and <laughs> Maybe it wasn't, you know, Archangel Michael that you were talking to. And that's why, like, I think it's important to be careful too. Like, I get a lot of people are like, can I send you healing? Can I send you healing? Can I send you healing? And some people get really weird about it. Like, like to almost to the point of like, it becomes too much. Like, like, why? <laughs> like, why do you want to do that so badly? Um, because if people like, they may not know that they have like that their, their intention or whatever is not coming from the right place, but it's like, some people may think that like they are actually doing the healing or some people like to do healing and they attach to you and suck from you, your energy. Um, I used to have this person that would like beg me every time she saw me to do a healing session with me. And I was like, no, I, I started being like, no, I don't want you to touch me because I know I'm just gonna be tired and like drained and I have to like fix myself after you leave. No. So I never said that to the person, but I knew like I caught on after like, you know, the second or third time I was like, this is weird. And the way that it like one time literally came to me, let me just touch your solar plexus. So I was like, no, um, that was weird. But that, that, unconsciously she probably i don't think she's conscious of like let me take bridges power but that's what she was trying to do by begging to touch my solar plexus just a moment of it it's it's like like my precious like she wanted more um and that's what you know thing that's what happens is like things attach and then they feed and they like it and they feed more so fear and you know upset depression all those things are what kind of like brings it on so you don't want to be feeling those things or like like tr allowing those things to continue continuously so symptoms of an implant is like having wicked low energy no matter how much food or sleep you have um there's like a non-stop chatter in your head you know like intentional silence cannot happen like you just can't silence your mind or there's always something going on which is really weird when i was like because this is what happens too. Like, I read this to you and you're going to be like, I have that, I have that, I have that, I have it. So don't do that because you probably don't. We just did an entity implant removal whole thing. So you should be good. Um, but like, it's human in us to, to be like that. I got that. I got that. I got that. Cause I was like, Ooh, cause for the last like week, I don't, I don't listen to TV or have anything going ever. Like the only thing I ever have going on is like a quick little video or something on my phone. There's nothing. It's just my fan going all the time. I can hear music right now. And there's no freaking music playing. Like, I, like, and I can tell you the songs. Like, like different songs have been coming in and I'm like singing them. And I'm like, where is this music coming from? Like, it's not, it's not me. It's not, like, I don't have anything on. My dad doesn't have anything on. My dad's two floors down, like, below me. Even when I'm in, like, the second floor down, I can't hear his stuff. So, I'm like... What is going on? And then it like, sometimes it sounds like rock music and then other times it sounds like classical rock. And like, um, sometimes it's like, like, I, it's just weird. It changes, like it could be like a TV show intro. 
I don't like, am I just going crazy? Or like, am I tuned into some frequency, like music channel? Like, it's weird. And so I walk around and I'm like trying to find the source of this music and I can't find it. But that, you want to, like, one of the things you may have is like an inability to silence your mind. If I try to silence it, it silences. So I know I'm like, okay, I have control over some, somewhat, but it's like, I'll be sitting here working and I'm, it's like I'm at work at a business with music going in the background. It's weird. Um, so unable to release trauma. That's one of the big things. Like if you can't release your trauma, you may still, you may have something that's like, likes that, that you have that trauma because it's like feeding off of it. Um, inability to stop your addictions an inability to feel emotions. You may feel numb or have no positive emotions. Um, you may feel inauthentic to yourself. Like you just may feel like detached or like, I don't know who I am. Um, you may stay stuck and stagnant, like no growth, no, no evolution, no goodness happening. You could feel alone and just like separate from source. And, um, you might have a lot of negative self-talk or even just self like negative talk about other people or places or situations. It's just like everything's, everything's bad. Everything's negative. Everything's icky and gross and you hate it all. And then you could have disturbing thoughts come out of like nowhere. Um, that are like, just kind of like, like, why am I thinking that? Like, it's just stuff that you probably don't normally would think, you know, like maybe like a severed head or something. I don't know. But, um, you know, just really disturbing thoughts that are just kind of like pop in like unprovoked for no reason. And then, um, doo -doo -doo, nightmares of things that you never experienced or have seen. Like if you're experiencing like crazy nightmares, like those disturbing thoughts of stuff that you've never seen before and never had like any like subconscious like thing with it, then it's like, where is that coming from? That's not my consciousness creating that. Um, then apathy, no motivation to pr improve your life. A lack of compassion and understanding for yourself and others. Cloud of confusion, always, like, just always being confused, always being disoriented. Um, not sure of your purpose. And you could get very angry or upset easily with people. You may be a little obsessive compulsive about things. Um, you may have a lack of energy flow or an inability <laughs> to use your gifts. Or a reoccurring illness that the doctors can't find a good reason for. Chronic pain and weakness. Or empathic overload, like feeling other people's stuff way too much, like more than you should. Paranoia, um, or or rationalizing like bad behavior, like psychotic, you know, narcissistic, being like, oh, that's okay. Not during like the moment of it, but like afterwards, like being like, oh, I guess it wasn't so bad, like that they tried to kill me, <laughs> like just rationalizing it um, from yourself and others. So those those are some of the things that like can happen, but those are also things that happen anyways as a human condition by being here on this planet and by being separated from your power and your strength and your belief system that empowers you to be like good about you know all of these things i it's unfortunate but like i've seen a lot of people that just like i cannot break them out of that like they want to be a victim there are some people that will have an attachment that they may say they want to get rid of it or they may think that they want to get rid of it but they don't because they enjoy like the the bullshit that comes from it or they are used to it like sometimes it can get to a point where there's like a split to like some like um you can almost like equate it to like like psychosis and when people start like having voices or they have like weird multiple personality thing going on that can be like a demonic thing but again most of the time it's been created by that person or they're very unwell within the mind and they like want it to be there so they feed it and they they don't let it go they're like i like this like and it, they don't really like it but they're just used to it and it's like it's a part of them because they've never known any different if you grew up your whole life surrounded by darkness and like abuse and neglect and guilt and shame and all of those things it's very easy for you to stay in that place and believe that you shouldn't come out of that place or it's very hard to give you new beliefs that are like, life is good, and I'm great, and I'm awesome. Because also, they have a lot of shit to heal. Any wounds, any emotions that are trapped inside of them need to be looked at and like released. Um, and there has to be a willingness to let that stuff go. And sometimes people like to be the victim. They want, that's their story. That's, their, that's who they are. That's what they identify as. That's what they create from. 
So that's all they do. And uh, not all symptoms may be tied to just implants or attachments. They will be tied to your beliefs, your emotions, your trauma, your past lives, your consumption of processed foods. So if I read those things off and you're like, oh my God, I have attachment. Do you eat processed food? Do you have any emotions that you haven't like let go of? Did you have any past lives that you maybe got to heal? Did you, you know, maybe believe something that you shouldn't believe because I can guarantee you do? And, you know, just think about the way you take care of yourself because all of the things that we do to ourselves can make all of that stuff happen. You know, it's like if you have all of those things going on at once and it's like your, you know, whole life is being taken over, then yeah, there's probably an attachment or an entity or a demonic thing. But again, the most likely source of the problem is you creating it or you believing that it exists to begin with that allowed it to come because those people have you ever noticed like the ones that don't believe in it don't ever really deal with it because they don't believe in it they're like eh. like they don't really get bothered by it some people will get bothered by it and not know that they're bothered by it like um and that can happen with like ghosts like 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 spirits who've passed over that maybe want to like live on through somebody else. Like if you moved into a house that some dude died in and that dude was like a drinker and a smoker and he wanted to have sex with all these people and he was just like, whatever, he could like use you as a way to do those things. And I've seen it. I've seen like people that I know personally that like moved into a house and the house was like really messed up and there was a lot of weird shit going on and like, come to find out it was, like, a place where they had kept, um, like, slaves and all of that, like, back in the day. But, like, the guy that lived there started, like, drinking, like, wicked heavily, like, all the time. It was just, like, couldn't control the urge to drink. And it was, like, ruining the whole lifestyle there. And it's, like, those things can happen. So, um, I went with another person and we, like, did, like, a clearing on the house and, like, a thing at the table to figure out what was going on. And that's where we got some information, but... I, like that type of thing is like it happens on that thing it's like they may be more susceptible like he had a couple of drinks and that let that space in that lower vibration for that that being or that ghost because that's what we would call it a ghost where it's just energy consciousness and frequency that went into him because his frequency and energy was low enough to match with that and that's the thing too you've got to be able to be a vibrational match to things so when you want to remove an entity implant whatever like, I always try to do it with light, so I'll, like, imagine whatever, whatever it is, or I'll see whatever, like, I've seen, like, I've seen, like, the tentacle things, I've seen, like, um, actual beings, like, be there, and whatever it is, I try to, like, if I, if I have to grab something and remove it from them, I try to, like, get that thing to match that thing's frequency so that it can, like, take it easily and get rid of it put it somewhere into light for transmutation put it into the vortex for transmutation um and just like imagine the whole process of getting rid of it but before you do you want to do protection you want to open up the vortex protect yourself protect you know whoever you might be working on because you may be working on somebody that has one of these things and it's a psychic thing like you're not, like you're not gonna feel it on them you're not gonna like see this big like thing bulging out of them you might see it energetically or with your third eye um, and that would indicate to you okay this person's got something so um, how you feel guided to remove it is up to you too like everybody's got their little thing that they think is the best thing that's ever been done to remove them it's because it's what they believe is what they intended to do is what was done so it's not like it's a big rocket science mission to get rid of these things. You just have to set up the protection so that you're not susceptible to other things coming in while you're doing it, especially if you're working on somebody who has a low vibration anyways. You don't want to be all mixed up in their shit and getting connected to whatever they got going on. So you would open that vortex and then I bring in light or like I imagine like a pillar of light coming in through the crown of that person, myself, and I fill up like every inch of the body illuminated with bright, 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 bright light so that those dark entities or those dark attachments or the dark, whatever the hell it is, can be seen because it's dark. So it's like, it's going to be like illuminated in the light and it's, it's not going to be able to hide like they try to do. So when you see it and you find it, that's when you are going to remove it. 
and you can either demand that it leave like if it's a being you can demand that they leave that they don't have like the right to be there because it's not their body and we all have free will and it's like you and you can say whatever but in the meantime also remember that this may be a manifestation of that person creating it so what you say would have to tie to the level of consciousness of that person so if you've got somebody there on your table that believes that like you know you've got to be like in the name of jesus christ i compel you to leave you've got to do that to get rid of this thing and spirit will direct you because like i never thought i would say that shit i never i was like this is stupid like i never believed in demons to be, to begin with until i saw them and I was like, I still, like, I still have, like, I, I have a belief, but it's not, like, I don't believe, like, the scary, ooh, it's gonna get me thing. I just know that they exist and that we create it and we become susceptible to it by what we do. And to get rid of it, it depends on who it is, but you gotta drop to their level of consciousness or, you know, go to their level of consciousness and do what they need to be done so it can be removed and they can believe that it's been removed and not come back. And also... It would be a good idea to heal or work to release the stuck emotions or whatever this person's got going on connected to the creation of it. So if they had sexual trauma or they had some abusive, you know, person in their life or they had something really traumatic happen, you know, taking them back to that to do that fragment retrieval. So that would be like a soul retrieval where we're going to do a couple of soul retrievals in this level. Basically, a soul retrieval is... When we go back to a time that somebody had experienced trauma and instead of reliving it, we look at it from above, like we're up higher than it. We look at it from above and we have them like see it play out, like see what happened, but don't relive it. Don't feel it. Don't let yourself go back to the, that emotion or feeling. Just look at it and then look at it from a higher perspective of why did that happen? You know, like what happened to that person before they did that to you? Like maybe they did what they did because of their own suffering and their own bullshit and their own victimhood and usually when somebody does something to us it's because they're messed up themselves so sometimes it's like helps people to see okay like they didn't just like single me out because i'm a bad person or i'm not like you know there's something wrong with me that like they should have done that to me like it just gives people a new perspective surrounding it and then once they've seen all of that we will rewrite it. So we want them to imagine the whole experience played out differently. Like that person may have showed up and instead of whatever happened going down, happening, see it play out like in a nice way. Like, oh, okay, like, hey, how are you? We're good, good, yeah, all right, bye. Like, bye. Like, you don't have to go through the whatever you went through part. We can rewrite it and change the energy frequency of it and create a new reality where now when they come back, they've retrieved that part of their soul, which is what happens in that moment, is they're retrieving the part of the soul that was lost during the time that they had that experience or that trauma, whatever was lost in that moment that made them go to the victim place or create that like attachment or that opened up space for that thing to start coming in, could have just been an energy cord at first and then over time got bigger and bigger and bigger and manifested into the demon or into an entity or into whatever it is that they are creating. And then we retrieve that and put that back. So now they're good again. They don't like, they're not like going to be, because once somebody goes through something like that, then they set themselves up because of their belief system. And they like, they feel a certain way. They ripple out a certain vibration. They attract more of those types of experiences or more of those types of people into their life or they continuously do it lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So by going back to a soul retrieval, we break the cycle. We're like, no, we're not gonna keep you know, attracting this because like people do it with romantic stuff a lot where it's like every person they date is the same freaking thing over and over and over. If you go back to that first one, what, where, whatever happened that made them start like attracting that reality, we can recreate it, you know, get rid of it retrieve the part of the soul that was lost during it and now they're going to go forward without continuously attracting more of those so when we do a soul retrieval we go back at least three times i go back to the the last thing that pops up in their mind like what was the last time you went through trauma and whatever it is that's where we go and then we go back further from there and then we go back further from there and then sometimes if i you know have enough time or it depends on what i'm doing i'll go further into another life 
or I let them decide. I'm like, wherever you need to go, wherever it is, like if it's in this lifetime, another lifetime, this dimension, another dimension, multidimensional version of you right now that's existing somewhere, wherever this is like created, whatever is going on that needs to get rid of or rewritten, let's go there. So I let people's unconsciousness guide them a lot because their consciousness knows better than I do, knows better than them probably where it needs to go. So that's how we do like a retrieval of a soul fragment. And then um, like the clearing, whether you're doing demonic or implant entity, like I said, you want to basically imagine that you get the vortex open, bring down like a pillar of light, see it go through every part of your body and every part of whoever you're with and tell whoever you're with what you're doing. Like you probably don't want to do this without like letting them know what's going on a little bit. Like if you're going to be... It's, it depends on the circumstances. Like if somebody's on your table having convulsions and like screaming and you can't talk to them, like just do what you're guided to do in the moment. But like if somebody comes to you and like you feel like with them just talking to you that they have an attachment or they have something on them or whatever, let them know before you go into it what you think so that they can be on board with the removal of it because intention is what creates our reality. So if your intention and belief is behind, hey, we're going to get rid of this, that's what's going to happen. Much more likely than if you go do it by yourself and don't tell them anything, they're not going to know what's going on. So they're not going to have the intention or the belief that that thing that's been bothering them all this time is going to leave because they're going to just think yet yeah, you did what everybody else has done or that nothing really happened in that, that session. So it's all about belief. It's all about energy and it's all about intention. But, you know, bring that light through you, through them, like every inch of your body and just bright, 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 bright as can be. So blinding bright that it's like nothing can hide from it. And that's when you can either just like demand that it leaves, like once you've like fa found where it is or what it is, um, or just, you know, like get rid of it, like get something on your hand, imagine light on your hand like a glove or whatever you want it to be maybe you don't want a glove because you don't want to touch it <laughs> like you get like a clamp or you know one of those things. like my mom used to have one of those things that would like reach stuff for her get one of those and clamp it get it out put it into the vortex to transmute it and just like see it happening like you know energetically like you don't really have to be like grabbing the person or anything just visualizing all of this happening and guiding this happening so that they know what's happening so you guys are both on the same thing happening and that's basically it so that's how you would remove it is through your intention and your vibration and your your ways of dealing with that person so like everybody's levels of consciousness it, it's going to be up to you to kind of figure that out with the person like if you know the person every time they come to you they're like talking about mother mary or you know kuan yin or whoever then they may be the people that you want to call on or if you get this person that comes in and they're always talking about like gaia or pachimama or more shamanic stuff that may be who you want to work with and do like a shamanic -y type of thing going on because it's, it's, again, it's going to be what their tradition is, what they've grown up through, what their ancestors, and that's another thing too, like, your ancestors can pass this shit down to you. So, like, if your ancestors had something go down in their life, they could pass it down, like, you know, historically through the generations of their, of their family, and it's like, it will just keep playing out whatever it is. Like, it could be something that, like, nobody can ever get a job to stick. Nobody can ever get, a, like, a good husband or whatever. It's like something always happens and it keeps repeating through everybody's, you know, incarnations. That could be an indication that there's, like, some sort of attachment that was created from an ancestor. Like, maybe your ancestor did something and somebody, like, was like, I'm going to do a hex on you. And because somebody believed it and set that intention and created it with their belief and their intention, it exists. And it's out there. And now it's being passed down generation after generation. And especially if that person that was like the target of it knew about it and believed that that's what was done to them, they would create a reality where they like, oh no, I lost my job. Like, I, can't, I, mean, I got my hex. Like, that's, that's what happens is like people believe things and then they create from that belief. And if they, if they believe it, pass it on to their kids, their kids are going to create similar things. And it's going to be passed down. It's like it gets passed down even like genetically, like in the DNA and in your cells and your atoms and all of that. 
but you know just seeing things play out or or believing the family curse is going to create a reality where you're susceptible to those types of things manifesting um and so just know that like once it's cleared away you be able to get rid of a lot of the like symptoms that may have been manifested beforehand you'll have more you know stillness and silence in the mind uh pain relief would be like immediate if it was connected to something that was inside of them you'd be more confident in your choices you have good decision making feel more connected free from confusion better dream recall less reactions or less reactive to people you could walk away from addictions very easily you'd have a better ability to just you know overcome things you'd have better relationships you'd be less self-sabotaging and you probably have more inner strength um do, do, do. so yeah and again another reason why you may have one or why somebody may get one that comes to you is trauma on any level like physical emotional spiritual mental surgery like going into anesthesia sometimes can make people be like all like you know weird and susceptible to like just like altered consciousness um substance abuse depression anxiety stress fear violence worship and devotion like if you believe in god and like the bible and the devil and all of that you'd be susceptible to creating a demon or a devil or whatever and like being a victim of it because you did a, you did a sin or you feel guilty that jesus died or whatever like it could be anything that makes you create this because of your belief system that's why your beliefs are so important uh, near-death experience is another way that this could happen because then you're like in between like levels and that's the thing too it's like it comes from different places when they are like a thing that manifests from somewhere else like another level of consciousness or another dimension uh, but most that i've seen self-created and then inherited from your ancestors um, like if there was a target on your family like a hex or just voodoo or whatever and it really is again dependent upon where the people live like if they're like you know that where they do hoodoo or where they do voodoo or where they do hexes or where they do whatever it's probably what like is going to be passed down to you so if you knew on any level at all like subconscious unconscious past life you know recall whatever um you probably need to go about removing it in a way that would like make that belief system free of it it's basically just allow yourself to connect with the right consciousness just follow your intuition with that part of it because it's hard like i knew that lady like not very well that came to me that had like the thing that was like it got intense and i've never like i'm not like a jesus and mary like you guys know me i'm star seed light worker like talk about i barely even talk about like archangel michael but he's been coming to me since i was a kid but i'm not a big angel and all of that person I was like, in the name of Jesus Christ, I compel you to leave. And I was calling on all these people that I don't even know who they are. I don't even know where the names came from. But it just came in the moment because that's what she needed. So if you trust spirit and you trust what you receive and you don't get scared and freak out and be like, I don't know what to say, you'll know what to do. Like, it just comes through you. So if you need to call on the emissaries of light to come in to do it, you'd know to call on the emissaries of light to come in to do it. Like, if you were doing it to me, you'd probably need to call on them because I don't really, like, subscribe to all the other things. But if, you know, you're doing it to somebody that's been, like, in church their whole life, you may need to call on God himself to, like, come do whatever. It just, it's going to be dependent on that person. It's going to be dependent on their level of consciousness and their level of belief systems and what they're open to, too. Because some people are just, like I said, they don't want to get better. They want to be a victim. They, you know, are getting some benefit out of it somehow. Like, some people, like, you know what I'm talking about. People out there just do not care. Like, they are like, my life sucks. But they don't do anything about it differently. You try to help them and they have, like, a reason why all the things that you offered to help them doesn't help or can't help or it's not going to work. Blah, blah, blah. So you just want to get away from that person and never talk to them again there's people out there like that that can have this and then there's people out there that can get really like messed up in the head and think that they have this and they don't have it so you just need to go through the motions with those people and be like oh yeah boop, 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 all gone 
and they'd be like, okay. Like, there's seriously, that is exist. There's people who just want you to put on a show, like, and make it better. And they believe that it's better because there was nothing there to begin with. And you'd be able to tell. Usually you can tell. So, like, when you get somebody, you can scan them. Like, I've showed you, scan the people. And, you know, if there's something really weird or there's something kind of icky or you feel or see anything, because I don't see usually, but when these things show up, I see them. So spirit will make it known that, like, this is a, like, red alert type of situation. You got something here that you don't usually do. You need to pay attention. And that's when you're like, okay, what do I do? And you do what you're guided to do. I can't give to you exactly what to do in the moment because everybody's going to be different. So try your best to enhance your intuition. Trust what you receive from spirit. Do some automatic writing. Get get going with like connecting to spirit so that you have like a established way of communicating with them or that you recognize certain like cues from them. Do a lot of like that energy scanning to yourself that I did last week like you know, practice on yourself because you can get little shit all the time. Like it, it's always out there. So like regularly doing like that light thing, like seeing a pillar of light come into you and filling up every inch of you and just illuminating every part and looking around like, and like from your mind's eye, like close your eyes and like just kind of look through your entire body and intuitively go to wherever you feel guided to go. And then if there's something there or you feel there might be something there, do what you feel guided to do to remove it. Whether it's like, let me box this up in light and get it into the transmutation place. Or let me, you know, grab it and move, remove it, like, and hold on to it. But just, like, don't let it go all willy-nilly. Um, or, like, move on to the next host. Um, and keep your thoughts positive And keep your beliefs good. And process old wounds. Like, if you've been through something, don't just, like, be like, I'm fine. Because you're not. Like, there's there's still something there. Do some soul retrieval. Um, past life work. Ancestral healing. Shadow work. All of that stuff is going to help you to raise your vibration and to not be so susceptible to lower vibrations. Because that's what they are. If you have a high vibration and you're full of light and you're in love and you're good and you're blah, 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 you're going to be able to walk through a whole mess of fucking demonic things and nobody's going to get you. But if you're like, Meh miserable and sad and then they're gonna be like woohoo we like you because that's what they feed on is lower vibrations they want you to be in fear and sad and blech, and that's that's what will keep it around so you get to decide your level of consciousness and your level of beliefs so hopefully that made sense for you guys um and hopefully i covered it appropriately i feel like i might forget something but i don't know um yeah, that was basically it. It's I, I really don't know what else to tell you about it because it's like until you get there or you're in that moment, you won't really be able to see what I mean. It's not, not like I can be like, now let's do an example. Because um, it's, it's just, it's different every time. So next time we get together, we're going to talk about automatic writing and basically um, opening up to channel, which is another way, another thing that could get, you know, attachments is if you open up to channel, and you're, you know, not doing it appropriately, like if you're not protecting yourself, if you're not raising your vibration, if you're bringing in the wrong entities, um, you could be channeling some demons, you know, like you'd be channeling some lower vibrational consciousness. I don't like to, I don't call it demon because it's not. It's just like, it's just consciousness. It's probably like what people consider to be like the archons or whatever. Everybody's got their name for it. Basically, it's lower vibrational consciousness that doesn't have good intentions and they can come through and speak like they are the light, but then they do like manipulative things. And like a lot of times people don't even catch on to that. This is happening. They're like, oh, and they follow it along and just kind of blindly go into it. And that's like with the whole like Pleiadian thing when that started happening to me, I was like, this is like a cult. I was like, no, <laughs> I didn't want to do. I was like, this is weird, but I feel like them their light like they're like and the stuff that they say is not like we're gonna like they're not self-benefiting in any way um the messages that come through is to help people and if anything that sometimes they're very like like mean about it they're like they're very like direct it depends on which one comes through there's like an older lady or she sounds older like or feels older to me she when she comes through she's like 
But you don't want her, because she's going to be like, you're the problem, and you need to change, and you need to get your shit together, or this is going to stay the same, and your life is going to suck. She doesn't say it like that, but that's like basically what she implies. So they don't like mess around, but it's like, they're not mean and like, you know, like, you're evil devil child, and you don't deserve anything, you're always going to be miserable. Like, um, some stuff can come through people and not be good. So we're going to talk about opening up to channel the right way and um, getting out of the way, trusting when we do this, and then protecting yourself and others while you do this so that you don't make them susceptible to your sus other to other things, and then building your dictionary. So then you'll have a way, like when you're doing a clearing on somebody, to communicate with your guides and know what to say or what to do because your dictionary is full of information that you've been you know, give it from spirit. So thank you guys very much. I will see you again soon. In good day. Namaste.